Any of you like movies? You go to, ever go to see movies? Janet likes dramas and good love stories, and I like adventure. <laughs> so we usually go see adventure. No, 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 no. We, okay, she's saying, yeah, we do. <laughs> well, I'm going to give you the plot to pretty much every action adventure in a movie that, that's out there. Okay, here's the standard movie plot. You got, you got the vulnerable hero who has been wronged or hurt by some sinister person or some sinister force that exists out there. And he or she gains strength from their anger at the injustice and then sets out to get revenge. They are going to get back. They are going to get even. And in the end, the villain is vanquished Justice has been done, and the credits roll. Okay, now you guys don't need to see any other action adventure, because you know what they're about. That's it. That's it. And you know what? The truth is this, though. It kind of appeals to our sense of fairness. The idea that everyone in the end will get what they deserve. And we've all had the fantasies. Albeit, maybe not on the, the level of an action-adventure movie, but we can imagine getting back at that idiot who just cut you off on the highway. Or maybe it's that one who parked their cart in the middle of the aisle at the grocery store and you can't even get around it or get to the food that you wanted. We all run fantasies of how we can possibly get even. We run the revenge stories whenever we feel that an injustice has been done. And along comes Jesus. And Jesus warns us that even harboring these kinds of fantasies can give birth to action. That is, we can start doing those things making the bad decisions, which in turn can lead us into some really bad places, even into our own destruction, he points at. This is a section in what is the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus is now reframing this whole idea of retribution justice, which exists in the Law of Moses, actually. And he is calling his disciples to turn from the place of embitterment to embodiment. Embodiment of the way of the kingdom of God. You've heard it said, Jesus says, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. Which, by the way, as I mentioned last week, is actually a step in a positive direction because what the author of the Old Testament was simply saying that an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth, again, is that if you steal my cow, I can't go take your herd. I can only take your cow. That's the eye for an eye. So unrestrained vengeance was ruled out, and the commandment of God was designed to limit that kind of retribution justice to simply the severity of the crime that was committed. You can't take more. But rather than restating the law, which is what Jesus could have done here in the Sermon on the Mount, the law that gives the offended the right that the offender get at least what he or she deserves, Jesus overrules the law. And he said, you know, it wasn't anymore about limiting revenge. It was about rejecting revenge altogether. For revenge, as most of us probably know at some time in our lives, if we've ever tried it, it doesn't generally go so well. Revenge is about making ourselves feel better. Feel better over the one who hurt us. Jesus comes along in today's lesson to call his disciples instead to lean into what is the hard work of love. The hard work of suffering love. 
So that disciples of Jesus are not about to go about, they're not you know, intended to go about asserting their rights when something, they're affronted by something. But instead they are to respond in the terms of the good and the needs of the other. Even, even when that other has committed something wrong. Even when that other has done something against you. And that's the example here that we get in Matthew 5 that uh, was read this morning. And, you know, if you took that reading and you decided that you were going to make that into a movie, it probably wouldn't sell very well. For an example, in an action movie, let's say you got the backhanded slap across the right cheek. Well, what would happen in an action movie? Well, that would warrant an epic beatdown, right? Not here. So rather than retaliating, Jesus urges his disciples to do something to turn the other cheek. Now some argue, we probably even had that argument within ourselves sometimes, argue that these commandments, this whole, you know, this whole turn the other cheek, uh, lose your shirt, walk an extra mile, that Jesus is actually, is he just turning his disciples into doormats? Doormats for, you know, all of those not-so-good people who are always out there trying to take advantage. Standing there and just taking whatever comes along, that seems more like a sign of weakness, not strength. We're conditioned to fight for our rights. And so it's no wonder what G, that Jesus' approach seems to be when we hear it, and, and our response is probably sometimes this, that seems unrealistic. And it maybe even seems a little dysfunctional. But rather than seeing these actions as weakness, Jesus says they're actually positions of strength. The way that Jesus confronts wrong, which he does, is not through violence. He does it through a non-violent resistance. The kind of thing that will confound, that will shame, that will disarm the aggressor. We don't trust in our own abilities because our own abilities can get in the way to set things right, in other words, we trust in what is God's ultimate justice to set things right. And it's that knowledge, that, that understanding of, of God's justice that enables us to, to follow the command of Jesus, which is way out there, to what? Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. And for Jesus... It's this kind of love that resembles, that looks like the love of God and makes us, in turn, look more like God's children. Jesus says that we are to love people. And the hard one is when he says, especially our enemies. Because you know what? It doesn't take a lot of real moral force to love a friend. That's pretty easy. So Jesus asks us to do something that sometimes can seem just a little bit counterintuitive. Love those unlikely to be loved. Love those who are unlikely to be loved. Love the poor, love the rich. Love your enemy, love your coworker, love the conservative, love the liberal. Love the person who is least like you. That is the love of God. And if that love has been extended to us, who are we not to extend it to others? Even those who have wronged us. So the bottom line that comes out of this portion of, of, of the Sermon on the Mount is, is this, is that we are not to dish out to offenders what they deserve. That's not what it's about. It's not how God dealt with us. 
Instead, we are to be the embodiment of God's love in forgiving and loving them radically. And the best example that we can get of any kind, of that kind of love is the cross where he overcame, where Jesus overcame with suffering love, evil, badness, death itself, overcoming with good. So if we think about it, if we are, next time we get into that frame of mind about, you know, what do I, how do I want to get even? If we optioned for love over revenge, what might that look like? Because that's the kind of action hero that Jesus is looking for. All glory be to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.